Good afternoon guys, Sam from Lumtech here, here to bring you another video. Hello guys, today we'll be installing a Premier Elite DT. These are my favourite detectors, um, I just really like the, the make of them, they're really good. Um, so what we'd be doing is going through how to fit these brackets, wiring the detector and then popping the lid on. Um, I won't be doing them because I've already fitted one up there as we can see. And what we, I generally do is knock out this centre hole using my terminal and then using a Phillips or Posi screwdriver. And then whatever wall that I'm going to be mounting on, whether, rather it be from the, the left hand side or the right hand side, if this trunk wasn't there, I'd do whichever side I've got most easy access to. So usually on the left, um, so my, I can use my right arm to drill. Um, I would knock out, using my terminal, a small hole here, which is where they've got thinner plastic. And then at the bottom, you can just see that down there, is where I'd also be knocking through using my terminal to mark a little hole in the wall and then drilling about an inch deep using my um, masonry drill bit or a, com a, uh, con a multi construction from Bosch drill bit which is good um, and that will then use a red wall plug and a inch eight screw um, you can use a three quarter six if you'd like but I generally use a three um, a, an inch eight shall I say um, what we will then go through are the, is the actual brain of the detector, which like this, this is the dual tech, so it uses both, both uh, passive inf infrared and uh, microwaves. Um, these little silver patches, try not to touch. Um, you can give them a clean afterwards, but it's probably just avoid touching them with your grubby paws. Um, on the top, we can see the different terminals which we have available to us. We've got uh, two for tamper, two for alarm, one for the uh, positive and one for the negative. These last two you won't need to worry about, but if you want to know what they are, check inside the uh, the leaflet that comes with the box. Um, these are about £12 each, um, and these are very good in terms of they don't force alarm that often. If you sight them not looking at windows or not looking at an oven, stuff like that, um, I doubt they'll ever force alarm unless a spider was to crawl inside and uh, make its, its little home. But if you regularly maintain the system, um, you probably won't get a problem with it. These detectors also have the uh, the luxury of having pre-resisted jumpers. Um, in the manual, you will find that these jumpers correspond to a resistance. So um, I think it's the left is for the tamper, the right is for the alarm, or the other way around. But the second one from the bottom uh, will be 2K2 and 4K7 respectively. And if you want it to be 1K, 1K, you'd, you put it onto the one down, and the same for that one down, and uh, just check the other ones because where this is going on Texcom, um, the only one I worry about is the second one up, which is, as I said, 2K2 tamper, 4K7 resistor uh, for the alarm. So what we want to do for this, we've got four colours that we don't be using. We don't be using our blue, our yellow, and our red, and our black. So our black is going to be our negative, which will pop in the zero volts. The red is going to be our positive, which will pop in the 12 volts. And then we've got our blue and the yellow, which will be our alarm and tamper pair. But we've got four terminals. Hmm. So what we do, because this is a DT, we'd put one of the colours. I generally use yellow for the tamper, like the bell, into the first terminal of tamper. I then put the blue into the last terminal of alarm. And then this will do the magic and sort it out. So then what will happen is if I go onto my keypad, obviously it's not going to be the one that's in my hand, but um, if I press number 9, press yes, press number 3, press yes, I can then see it's secure 2K2. And if it was to go activated, um, it will then change to 6K9, which will be um, this, the, the resistance that will need to activate the alarm. Uh, we went through changing that in the previous video, uh, video, but I recommend using that setup. If, for example, you didn't have one of these sensors and you still wanted to wire it in the resistor, what you would do, you'd put the yellow in the first terminal and then you'd put nothing in between you to put a 2k2 resistor in between the last tamper and the first alarm that means that the current has to go through that 2k2 resistor you then put a 4k7 resistor across the alarm and then you then put your blue in that last alarm terminal as well that would mean effectively that your current comes down this cable goes through the tamper if there isn't a tamper goes through the 2k2 going to the first alarm if there isn't an alarm it will then go through nothing because the well would be going through the uh, the alarm uh, read switch and then going back onto the panel and you'd be getting a 2k2 resistance 
if the alarm was in was in alarm, it'd come down the yellow, through the tamper screen because it's not in tamper, across the 2K2. If it's seen something, the ridge which will be closed, it has to go through the, the 4K7 resistor, which will be in part going between the two of the alarm. And then it will be going back on the blue, and that's where you get your 6K9 resistor, because 2 plus 2 plus 6K7 is 6K9. Um, what we then do is sight this in to your bracket, which is like this, and you've got little grooves down the sides, which go in like that. Then we see this little screw down below, just pop that in like that, and then that you can pull that forward and it won't budge with these clips they go in at the top which you can see there and then they just squash together but using some force in the middle uh, on the bottom sorry you will hear it click and then click and then you do this bottom screw up um, if you lose this bottom screw um, because they have got that click action I wouldn't worry about it too much but it is better to have it in just in case someone wants to knock it um, you don't want everything to all fall apart so um, that's what I recommend. Uh, once this is in the system, uh, we obviously want to make sure that it is programmed in correctly. Um, in the panel, the red and black would go into the auxiliary power, and it'd be going into the A and T on the, on the um, on the board. Um, to program the zone in, what we would be doing is going to our zone setup by pressing number one on our engineer uh, mode, pressing yes, and we see this one above my head is currently a guard access because it's in my lounge. Um, if it's a new zone, it will generally come as a not used. So we'd press the no button and then press whatever we want it to be. So if we want it to be a guard, we'd press number three, for example, or number four for a guard access, or number one for an entry exit, which you wouldn't generally have for a detector. Um, we'd put it as a guard because it's going in, say, the landing. Once you've changed it to what it want to be, we want to press yes, and that will then lock it in. Um, if, like me, you don't want it in there anymore, or it is false alarming for whatever reason, um, just go into where it has the, the type, press no, press zero and it'll be not used and then press yes. And that will essentially mean that the panel um, will, will just ignore whatever it's doing. Um, it will still light up um, but it just won't act upon its, uh, upon its findings basically. Uh, and that is how you would wiring a DT and program it into the system. Uh, if you've got any comments or questions please leave them below and if you enjoy the video please drop a like.